don't you? How, how, how perfect it is for us to conclude Creativity Month with one of the most creative people I know. And that's true. You, you allow yourself to get lit. Wait, let me change that. <laughs> you allow yourself to get lit up from within, and then you share that with all of us. So um, Ernest Holmes said this, when one isolates him or herself from the divine fire, he becomes or she becomes an isolated spark. When one isolates him or herself from the divine fire, meaning when you take yourself in mind out of all that you are, you're still an isolated spark. You're still this small spark, but you have to get lit, (laughs) so to speak. You have to be willing to light it up. So for this month, we started with Monopoly with Daniel and his song, Boardwalk and Park Place. And I asked you to spend the month realizing, recognizing, and revitalizing. The three R's, the three railroads. Realizing, revitalizing, and recognizing. In week two, we sang the spark of creation. And we talked about catching the spark, this this isolated spark, the spark that you are. And then on last week, I asked you who you are in your mind's eye. So the title of my talk today is Light It Up based on what Donya just did, to light it up. So I want to go back to Ernest Holmes' quote. When one isolates him or herself from the divine fire, he becomes an isolated spark, or she becomes an isolated spark. So this whole month is about creativity. And creativity is that fire in you. Ernest Holmes calls it the fire in the belly. It is the fire inside of you. But I think given this year, what has happened, a lot of people feel isolated. And they feel like perhaps not even an isolated spark. I think a lot of people feel a little bit like they've been doused. They've just been put out and there's nothing but smoke smoldering. Not the truth. So I am here today to disabuse you of that concept. Because no matter where you are, no matter how you feel, there is a spark inside of you that you are responsible to light up. That you are responsible to bring back to life. So let's look at creativity. What is creativity? Because that's what that fire is. That's the creative essence. That's all we are. In the quantum field of pure energy, we are nothing more than pure creative energy, bubbling up, expanding, moving. It's moving, it's expanding, it's growing, it's emerging at all times with you or without you. You can be that isolated spark somewhere, but the fire's still blazing. The thing is, are you willing to throw your spark into the fire and get going again? So, What is creativity? This is the definition in the dictionary. The tendency to generate ideas, alternatives, or possibilities. So creativity is the tendency to generate ideas, alternatives, or possibilities. You, inside of you, there is this tendency to want to create, to create possibilities, to generate new ideas. Ernest Holmes said this, love is the central flame of the universe, the very fire itself. And he, cre- he says love and creativity are, sim- uh, are synonyms. He says this too. Love is self-givingness through universal creativity to impart the divine throughout the human experience. So creativity, the love, all, same thing, that thing inside of you is actually at all times nudging you to be the fire. Even as you stand there is the spark. It is nudging you. It is reminding you. It is asking you. It is literally pushing you to be all that you could possibly be. And as we come to the end of this month, that's what I want you to think about. So back to Webster. The tendency to generate ideas, alternatives, and possibilities. You, you are the ideas. You're the ideas. They don't just happen out here. You are the idea. You, you, Connie Tibbetts Milner, you are are the alternatives. You are the alternatives. And you, Joe Jordan, you are the possibilities of life. At any age, at any time, everything is possible. So you are the ideas, you are the alternatives, and you are the possibilities because you are the creativity of the universe. That's who we are. We are creative. There's no such thing as as someone who is not creative. Every single person is creative, but you may be that little spark that came out of the fire and is laying there on the floor. You got to get back. 
you got to light it back up again. So I was looking for quotes. Well, I was looking for quotes to support my ideas, of course. You know, you look for quotes to prove your point. What other great people, what other besides myself, what other great people are giving this talk, are, are saying, you are the creativity of the universe, use it. Well, of course, the biggest one for me is Elizabeth Gilbert, because she wrote a book called Big Magic, and the title of that book, it says, Big Magic, and then in little parentheses, Creative Living Beyond Fear. So she says this, you do not need anyone's permission to live a creative life. And I'd like to start there today. You do not need anyone's permission to lead a creative life, but you do need your own permission. And that's where we fall. We create these ideas. This week in Mental Muscle, it's Boundaries Week and Priorities, but I'm going to talk about boundaries. We create walls in front of ourselves. We don't give ourselves permission to live out loud, audaciously. We worry about judgment. We worry about what other people think. We worry about, is this good enough? Am I good enough? We worry about the past. Am I going to repeat something I might have done in the past? And yet creativity is just saying, oh, just shut up and use me. Just let me out, for God's sake. Stop putting up all these walls that you think you're protecting yourself with. I will hide back here. I, will, I think you actually said, someone said this. this way. I will hide way back here and give someone else the state. I don't, I don't even feel comfortable in this position. This is a hideous position. I belong out here, right here. Hold on. Center. Absolutely center stage. I always belonged in center stage. I remember when I was doing, when I was in the chorus. <laughs> I never was in the chorus. I didn't get there yet. No, no, no. She just pointed to her watch and said, 20 minutes. Actually, it's a half hour. Um, <clears throat> I remember when I was in the chorus of a choir. And uh, no, when I was in the chorus, which I was once, one time only. Uh, but I was in the chorus, and I remember doing this song. And Tommy Toon was center stage. Tommy Toon was the star. He was center stage center stage, and I was right on the left of him, and I remember the, choreo the choreographer's assistant, choreographer hated me, but the choreographer's assistant came up and he went, you need to tone it down about 20%. I was like, what? He said, yeah, you, you, you're kind of drawing my attention to you. I said, but isn't that the point? He goes, not when you're in the chorus. And I went, then I will never be in the chorus again. I was like Scarlett O'Hara, I will never be in the chorus again. And I never was, again, in the chorus. But think about all the walls you put up where you create these, these, these systems where you hide, where you're afraid to step out. Really step into the light, Carol Ann. <laughs> step into the light <laughs> and be willing to be your true, authentic, audacious, crazy self. So that's Elizabeth Gilbert. And, and if you haven't read her book, Big Magic, you really should. Maya Angelou said this, you can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. I can't tell you how many people tell me they're dried up or they've run into a block. No, you run into a wall that you put up yourself. You cannot run out of creativity. If you just got quiet, as Connie just said, if you just got quiet long enough, the universe would have to speak through you. But we don't. We don't get quiet long enough. We spend an awful lot of time telling ourselves why we're dried up. Well, this happened, and I, I did this before, and nobody liked it anyway. Why should I write anything again? Why should I sing again? Someone told me I sounded loud. Whatever it is, we got to stop living our excuses and understand that this creative impulse, this creative energy is infinite in scope, can't dry up. You cannot dry up. Everything is possible through you right now, no matter what, and no matter what has happened or what you think may happen. Pablo Picasso. He said, the chief enemy of creativity is good sense. I love that quote because so often people tell me I don't have good sense about something. I was like, you don't realize what's going on. I went, no, I don't, and I don't care to. I am not interested in all the reasons why you think I shouldn't do this. Because if I'm going to listen to those, wall, 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 wall. It's just too hard. I don't feel like climbing over all those walls. I'd rather mark all those walls down, say, please don't share with me why this can't happen. I'm going to tell you why it can happen. And I've lived my entire life like that. And yes, people may call me a renegade. People may say that I'm disrespectful. But I do my best to respect. But it's hard to respect people that are trying to hold you down. It's very hard. And I think that person that tries to hold you down the most is your own reaction to other things and other people. 
And that's what we need to get clear about at the end of this month. If you're willing to be creative, then you have to be willing to go out there and put that creativity out into the world, no matter what, whether it fails or succeeds. Who cares if it's a failure? Connie just talked about that. If this choice didn't work, okay, didn't work. Had a hell of a time trying it. Now I'm gonna try this. If this works, great. If it doesn't work, another hell of a time trying it. I'll try this choice. There's an infinite plethora of choices for us to make in life. And we can't let whatever happens with each choice stop us from moving forward. So that's Pablo Picasso. You don't need to make sense out of it. You need to make truth out of it. Sometimes the sense is not the truth. It's just people's way of staying small or hiding behind some sensical idea. Deepak Chopra says, what, life, what keeps life fascinating is the constant creativity of the soul. And Gertrude Stein said this, of course, Gertrude Stein would say something like this. She says, one must dare to be creative. And I could, can't you just see her at some pub with a beer mug in her hand, getting up on a bar and going, one must dare to be creative. I can totally see her doing that. I think I might have been her in a past life. So the title of my talk, Dare to Light It Up. I'd like to ask you a question today. What kind of talents do you think you have? If you're going to light it up, if you're going to really light up from within, what talents do you think are going to come forward? No, I'm not asking you to tell yourself what talents you want. I'm asking you to ask yourself, what innate talents are in me that I may not even know I have? If I'm going to light it up, if I'm going to be willing to go jump to light my fire, the time to hesitate is what? Through. I was just going to say is new. I was like, that's not it. <laughs> the time to hesitate is through. We got, are you ready to stop hesitating? Are you ready to stop using that brake constantly? Stopping, stopping, stopping. Eventually you need new brakes because you're just too heavy on the brakes. The time to hesitate is through. What's the next lyric? Through. No time to wallow in the mire. It is time to pick your little isolated self up that little spark, here, I got it right here in my hand. I'm gently holding it and bring it over here. No, I'm going to bring it right here and just throw it into the fire. And I mean throw it. You need to be Gertrude Stein, Gertrude Stein, Gertrude Stein. All at once. You need to be willing to say, I dare to be creative. So Schopenhauer said this, tap into your talents. He says, talent hits a target no one else can hit. Genius hits a target no one else can see. Genius hits a target no one else can see. So I want to ask you a question. What do you see that no one else can see? What is yours to see? Because I want to tell you, something is yours to see. There is something that is yours to see. I was speaking to Rick Tamlin yesterday, a really dear friend, and Dr. Joe Hooper, and all of us were talking about the idea that there is something that each one of us feels is ready to just show itself to us. There is something to see. I could miss it if I wasn't paying attention. If I wasn't, this year's theme, awakening to the bigger me to something new, something audacious, something crazy and, 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 and exciting and, and passionate. There is genius in each one of us. And genius is something that you can see that maybe the rest of the world can't see. But guess what your job is? Take what you can see and put it out there. Let everybody else see your genius. Let everyone else see, hear the creativity that is you. That's our jobs. That's the job of that, that isolated spark that somehow forgot he or she was God, was divine. Dare to light it up. So, as I said, Elizabeth Gilbert's book, Big Magic, I have a paragraph here I want to read for you. And it's, well, I'm just going to read it and then we'll talk about it. She says, I told the universe and anyone who would listen that I was committed to living a creative life, not in order to save the world, not as an act of, of, of protection, not to become famous, not to gain entrance to the canon, not to challenge the system, not to show the bastards, not to prove to my family that I was worthy, not, to, not as a form of deep therapeutic emotional catharsis, 
but simply because I liked it. And I read this and I just, I had tears in my eyes. I was like, I don't need to change the world. The world's going to change. I don't need to prove how great I am. I am already great. I mean, that's what we know. It's the last question in the five questions. Do you know how great you are? I don't need to prove anything to anybody. I don't need to be a minister anymore. I don't need to do that. I don't need to go out in the world and give lectures and give talks and teach classes to bring quantum physics into the new thought movement. I don't need to do any of it for any reason, except that I love doing it. I like it. I like standing here on Sunday. I like singing. I like singing with Mindy and Donia. I like what I do. That's what creativity is all about. So as we hit the end of this month, my question to you is, are you willing to commit to what you like to do? That's tapping into your creativity. That would be lighting it up. When you like something, it shows all over your face. When Tonya gets up here and sings, her whole body is smiling. When Mindy sings, all of us, when we get up here and just let it rip, we just love what we do. That's creativity. So when Elizabeth Gilbert says, I told the universe and anyone who would listen that I was committed to living a creative life, I want to say I am committed to living a creative life, doing the things I like to do. How about ending the month like that? How about us ending our creativity month committed? Not being committed, but committed. Committed to the fact that you know what you like to do, you're willing to live it, you're willing to let it out, you are willing to light your fire. There's a great quote, great quote called, that says this, seduce your creative soul and it will always come back to you. Seduce your creative soul, it will always come back to you. During rehearsal just now, um, our last song of the day was on a slow mode. And so we, we, we started to sing it, but it was in like a really slow mode. And it became the sexiest, most seductive version of this little light of mine I have ever had the pleasure of singing and dancing to. We almost left it in for you, but no. Uh, but there was a moment there, and I just felt like the entire entire universe was literally seducing me, seducing me. Someone is calling my cell phone because I left it on. It's probably my son, isn't it? It is, because he doesn't know what time it is. Seducing you in such an amazing way, and it seduced all of us as we sat here. I mean, literally, we almost were like, yes, this is how you sing this song. Sometimes, if you're willing to roll with it, the universe will seduce you. The universe, your life, everything around you, the people in your life, they will seduce you right into being your most badass self, your most authentic, passionate, creative self. As we step out of this month and move into next month, and our theme next month is going to be Rise Up, so it's time to jump into the fire, to light that fire, to let it rise up inside of you, and then see what happens. Commit to living a life that you like. Commit to being the creativity of the universe. Commit to allowing the universe to seduce you into living the most amazing life. And do not let anything show up that could say to you, yeah, but get rid of the yeah buts. It is time for us to live our most audacious creative selves. Just let the universe seduce you and then light it up. Namaste. Ha, 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 ha.